What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. In honor of all of the crazy buffs that are coming, I noticed that in the comment section we had a couple of requests to do kind of a gear guide to kind of break down and go through how to gear your heroes. And I think this is going to be incredibly important, especially as a lot of the heroes that a lot of you guys know and love um, are going to be buff. <laughs> Mine specifically, Charlotte. So, uh, my girl Charlotte here, just as an example, we'll actually use her as case in point here. Um, I'm not going to get too specific specific per se on the builds today um, I just want to give you guys kind of a general overflow and general stats to look at when trying to build a hero as soon as I figure out how to pull up my heroes again <laughs> then we'll get that up and going and going for you um, what I want to avoid is being so complicated to the point where um, let's say if, if you're looking at a particular hero and you're and I'm like talking about some advanced build that you could run as long as like all the planets are aligned and the Hershey's Kiss has a specific squirrel on the top that you know curves to the left. Like, listen, we're not gonna get that in depth today because I don't want to confuse a lot of you guys. So what we're gonna do is give you a general uh, prescription uh, for how to gear s certain heroes based on uh, basically what they do, yeah, essentially, and we'll break that down into simplicity's sake all right so here we are we're looking at charlotte uh don't please don't take this as a way to gear her this is just some gear that i threw on her uh a long time ago when i was interested in maybe potentially using her but then i decided otherwise this gear is absolutely going to change uh if you guys are wondering how i'm going to build my charlotte i'm probably looking at a counter elbrus build um so probably on counter probably tanky probably high damage with elbrus that's what i'm thinking so with a little bit of speed in there so but in terms of general recommendations, when you guys are looking at gearing your heroes overall, what you guys are going to be looking at is class type, okay, role, all right, so class type, knight, role is what do you want your hero to do? Do you want your hero to be a support? Do you want your hero to deal damage? Do you want your hero to just stand there and look silly? You want him to go to McDonald's for you, get you a Happy Meal, go to Walmart, get you some toilet paper. What is your hero going to do for you in your team composition? Now, once you figure out those the answer to those two questions, then after that, you're going to decide on how you're going to build a particular hero. So when you guys are looking at a hero, so is it... Is it free? <laughs> no, it's not free. It's not free. Okay, Charlotte's not a good example for me to use. All right, let me pull up my BBK here then. Uh, but let's just use damage as an example. We'll go through uh, a damage dealer and then we'll go through a support. But basically, once you guys decide that you guys, let's say, okay, I'm looking at Bloodblade Karn. She's a thief. So typically speaking, thieves are going to have higher attack. They're going to be faster. Um, and they're normally designed to deal damage. So when you guys are looking at Karin, um, the big thing that you're going to ask yourself, okay, what's her role? All right. She's a thief. What do I want her to do? I want her to deal damage. So when you guys are looking at a particular hero and you want them to deal damage, there's a few stats that you guys are going to look for. And when you guys are trying to identify your gear, the best way to go about it is to identify the stats that you need. So typically speaking, crit chance, speed, crit damage, and attack percent are the primary stats that you guys are going to be looking for for damage dealers. Are there some exceptions to the rule? Absolutely. Uh, case in point, heroes like Lena or Luna who don't need as much crit to work because Lena you can get away with 50%, Luna you can get away with 70%, obviously if you max their passives right. Um, so you could sacrifice a little bit of crit, but where's the stats going to go? It's probably going to go either into speed, into crit damage, and or attack percent right so once you guys identify the prioritized stats or the priority stats that you guys need for the hero that is typically what you're going to look for when you guys are selecting gear now as you guys are selecting gear there's going to be kind of a progression as you go through this so what i mean by a progression is if you're just starting the game and you're getting into wyvern 11 or wyvern 10 or wyvern 9 naturally not every piece of gear that you get is going to be epic some pieces of gear are going to be blue and blue gear is okay if you understand the stats that you need to build a character. So let's say I'm building a damage dealer and I'm rolling for gear. I get a piece of blue gear, right? I already got all my gear from adventure mode, right? That, that you should have gotten that attack gear. I've already got my arena gear that you should have gotten that attack gear again uh, for your damage dealers <clears throat> because attack power is key when building damage dealers. So once you have that, now you're like, well, how do I fill out the rest of my gear? So Kind of using a template, let's just pretend that this is attack percent here. Attack percent, crit chance, speed, crit damage. Typically speaking, when I get a piece of gear, even if it's blue, uh, you know, again, if you guys are early game, just starting out trying to get gear or just try to gear your heroes, I'm looking for two stats 
that match this format. So when I start out, I'm looking for speed and crit, attack and crit, or crit damage and crit chance, right? Two of the four. Now notice I, I didn't say I was looking for attack and crit damage or speed and crit damage. The reason why is because most of the time when you guys are building damage dealers, you guys are going to prioritize crit rate and attack power or crit rate and speed. The reason why I say that is because with those two stats, those are going to give you the raw increase to uh, performance, so to speak, to your hero. So if I have attack percent and crit chance, higher crit means more chances for me to deal bonus damage. Higher attack power means I'm just going to deal more damage overall. Now, the reason I say, well, you're not going to really go for just crit damage with like, let's say, speed is because even if you have a high crit damage roll, unless you're building a hero that doesn't need crit, again, Lena or Luna or a hero that's guaranteed to crit, Charlotte, okay? Um, the reason I say that is because let's say you build a hero with a ton of crit damage. You don't have anything crazy like crit imprints or heroes that buff crit or anything like that. What that puts you in a situation is if you max, let's say you have 300% crit damage, but your crit rate's only like 30%. It means 30% of the time your gear is working. And 30% gear working means failure most of the time right so what i like to prioritize when i look at my gear is again if i'm building a damage deal, i look for attack and crit on blue gear okay and if i have those two stats then i'm going to proceed to roll the gear because i know both of my rolls are going to go there and then after that my my roll at nine and my roll at 12 is going to determine what i do with that gear after that okay and the same thing is going to apply once you guys started getting into purple gear purple gear same thing you guys are looking for three stats that match so speed crit chance crit damage attack crit chance crit damage right or crit chance crit damage effectiveness now you guys are like well d well when do i use effectiveness now effectiveness is going to apply uh, on heroes where you actually need to land harmful effects case in point being my regular karin as you guys can see here again i need a little bit more crit because 80 percent 87 percent is a little shoddy but i cheated this because i only use her for weapon 11 so since she's in Weapon 11, with Element Advantage, she gets a bonus 15% crit anyway. So when I'm in Weapon 11, she's always going to crit some good, right? Uh, however, shooting 400% crit on heroes that need the crit is a good idea, right? So again, crit damage, crit chance. But the thing with Karn is because of her abilities, um, her thing is she lands defense break. And I need her to land this defense break on the S2. So when you're looking at heroes that need to land harmful effects... Then what you're looking at then is then you're going to want to get effectiveness. Now, you don't need to, sh you know, shoot for the moon or go anything crazy and try to get like a million percent effectiveness or whatever. Um, but on your damage dealers, typically speaking, if there's harmful effects that you want them to land, that is absolutely necessary for your team to be successful. Then get as much effectiveness as you can. 50 is good. If you can do like 60 or 70, even better. But like, don't try to sacrifice your other stats, like your raw damage, uh, just to try to get like a high effectiveness roll. So if you guys can manage to do the effectiveness, great. But instead, again, I would prioritize the other stats that are most important to your class. All right. So the big thing here, guys, is when you guys are looking at this, obviously, I don't need no, let me find a piece of gear with no effect resistance on it. <laughs> but you guys generally get the idea so again damage dealers you guys are looking for speed crit chance crit damage and attack power um and of course effectiveness if they have harmful effects that you want them to land um but any any generalization or combination of those stats can be very good and depending on how those stats roll are going to, is going to determine where you're going to put the gear after you lock yourself in Okay, so that's simply speaking. Now, the beautiful thing about this strategy that I just talked to you guys about is that you could apply this to any other type of damage dealer. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter if the hero scales with HP, scales with defense, scales with cookies, scales with milk, whatever it is that they scale with, then you just replace the stat. So what I mean by that is let's say I wanted to build Cecilia or like a fallen CC. Where's my fallen CC at? So when we go to Fallen CC here, hold on, let me switch to Dark here. Fallen CC, do you love me? All right, so Fallen CC, same thing. So the difference with Fallen CC, though, is that she scales with health, right? So if I'm building a Fallen CC and I want her to deal damage, I'm still going to go high crit, high crit damage. I can even maybe squeeze some attack in there, maybe some effectiveness, right, if I want to land harmful effects. But the difference is I'm changing the attack percent focus over to a health percent focus does that make sense so if 
Heroes damage scales proportionate to max health. Then you just health, crit rate, crit damage, right? And then effectiveness that they needed and or speed if you're running them faster, right? So you see how that works? You know, uh, attack scales with, you know, scales proportionate to target's defense. Then I'm going defense, crit rate, crit damage, so on and so forth. Um, and that's a real basic, you know, kind of semi-formal way uh, to build whatever hero that you want to deal maximum damage. Again, the priority, priority being on the crit over the crit damage at first. And then if you can get the crit, then the crit damage, then it's good. But like if your hero doesn't get any bonuses to crit rate or anything like that, you guys are definitely going to want to make sure that you have as much crit rate as possible, as much whatever stat they scale with as possible, and then as much crit damage as possible. And the speed is going to determine where you position them. Now, once we get into supports, supports for 2020 guys is really, really easy. It's real simple. Okay, so you can take any support that you want in the game. We'll use Angelica, for example, because she's a real common support. And, it, and, and these guys are much, much easier. As much speed, as much health, defense, atta uh, <laughs> <not> attack power, <laughs> speed, health, defense, resistance, and effectiveness if they need to land harmful effects. But, like, if you have those five things, that's literally all you need. So when you guys are looking at a piece of gear, this is a good example. So I got speed here, I got effect resistance, I got defense, I got health. Um, and this is a 67 gear, so this is a really good example. So same thing is going to apply here. If you find a piece of blue gear, it's got health and defense, that's a good start. It's got speed and health, that's a good start. Speed and defense, good start. Effect resistance and health, good start. Um, and you can roll pretty much any of those, right? But ideally, this is something that you guys are looking for. Now, again, if it's a support that has strips harmful effects that are very very pertinent to the success of your team then effectiveness is going to be very important as well but for your general supports this is pretty much all you need and you stack all these stats pretty much good to go now we're trying to determine what type of speed you guys are going to use is ultimately going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish most supports are recommended around 170 to 200 unless you're using supports for like pvp specific things where it requires a very specific amount of speed for your team to work now after we kind of went over like the general prescription for how to you know gear your general heroes and then gear your support heroes you guys are probably wondering what sets are best now if you guys go back to my tips from the pro series where i interviewed some of the top players from all over a bunch of different guilds and they talked about a bunch of you know maths and and strategies honestly the best set in this game right now is speed just because of the bonus that it gives now there are other sets in the game that you can use for your attackers like attack sets but the only reason i would recommend attack sets is because it's easy to get for free without farming golem the reason i say that is because you can complete your attack sets on your damage dealers especially if you guys are just starting out just from doing your arena right getting your conquest points doing the stages in sidonia getting the extra attack gear there getting the adventurous path gear through those sets of gear, you're done with damage dealer gear, at least for your starter teams. Everything else you can farm specifically out of Wyvern. Speed gear is typically what I recommend for all of your heroes until you get to a comfortable position to where you're able to farm most dungeons or all dungeons plus hell rate. Once you guys get there, then you guys can start doing advanced builds like the counter Elvis build that I was talking about with Charlotte. Um, but the, the, the challenge here is as you guys are starting to gear your heroes, not to set yourself back in time by getting too obsessed with trying to, to, to complete dungeons that you may or may not be ready for. You can use speed gear from Wyvern, literally guys, through all of the content in the game. And then if you guys are trying to do advanced builds, again, I don't recommend really getting into advanced builds until your core foundational economy is done. Okay, shouts out to Elu12 for that because that's how he worded it. But the big thing is with, what I mean by foundational economy is all of your stuff is done. Your raid, you're doing your hell raids every week. Your Wyvern 11 is fast, you know, minute and a half, minute, minute and a half. And once you have your core stuff in place, then start branching out because then you have the leverage uh, that, that you'll need to really start to branch out and create other teams. So with that being said, guys, speed is pretty much 
king in terms of how you should build your heroes. Now, if you're building the damage dealers, I recommend going speed crit. Um, or obviously, if you're using the attack set, then go attack crit. If you guys are building supports, then speed whatever. Speed health, speed anything really is fine. You can go speed hit, speed cookie, speed immune, speed whatever you guys want. Um, but that's typically what I recommend. And you guys can get offsets as well as you guys kind of go through the game, complete your raids, you know, stuff like that. So those are things that you guys can look at. Now, obviously, after you guys finish gearing your heroes and you start supplementing gear, then you can start putting in that more complicated stuff like immunity, right? If you guys want to do a golem team, you guys can get health sets, right? Or you guys can use resistance sets or things like that as you guys grow and flesh out your account. So with that being said, guys, that's all I wanted to cover. That sums it up for my 2020 how to gear your heroes guide um, if you guys got any other questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'd be happy to assist and with that being said we will see you guys in the next video peace